Hey guys, so Samuel have over the last few weeks embarked on what can only be called a propaganda campaign to bully and threaten South African motorists into buying e-tags and more importantly into compliance and acceptance of a despicable and unsustainable e-tolling system. I must make it perfectly clear that I don't object to e-tolls in principle. I simply object to the way in which it has been implemented in Gauteng and the way in which they intend to implement it across South Africa. In this video, I will show you that Sanral's numbers do not make any financial sense, that the system from my perspective appears to be corrupt, and I hope to show you why we need to take a stand together in unison as a country to boycott e-tolling and to finally hold the South African government to account for wasteful expenditure of our money. It is high time that the government realize that they're accountable to us as their citizens, not the other way around. I urge you to spend a few minutes of your time to watch this video to better understand why this is so important. I've also included a free eTolls information pack in the description, which will give you everything that you need to know about eTolls and why it's important to take a stand. Please share both this video and the information pack with as many South Africans as you possibly can. So let's get into the numbers first. Here's what we know using information supplied to us by Sanrel and by looking at their financial statements from 2013. Sanrel have stated that there are 1 million users of the tolled Gauteng freeways. Up until one day before the implementation, Sanrel have been using a figure closer to 3 million, but Nazir Ali has now stated that this was for research purposes only, and the actual figure is 1 million. <laughs> this is quite laughable because he's clearly spinning this now to show a higher compliance rate. This is line number one. There are in excess of three million, three million registered vehicles in Gauteng, and at some point nearly all of them will inevitably use the freeways. In addition, much of the stock is held on consignment by retailers, and I believe that they're using these figures as well. This is line number two in just a single statement by Nazir Ali. But let's use Nazir Ali's one million number and give him a generous 90% ETAG compliance rate. That gives us 900,000 eToll payers, as indicated here. Sanol have stated that 82.83% of users will pay less than 100 Rand per month, that 10.1% of users will pay between 100 and 200 Rand per month, and that 1.82% of road users will pay between 200 and 300 Rand per month. This doesn't add up to 100%, and clearly the difference is made up of trucks, who Sanrel conveniently forgot to add to their propaganda. This accounts for 5.25%. Now we need to know what these trucks will pay, and that's pretty easy. I can plug these numbers into my calculator to determine the shortfall in revenue, and this difference will be the required payment. This comes to 2,180 Rand per month, using Sanrel's figures. And here it is here, but we'll get to that in a second. We also know that the monthly cap is 450 Rand for light motor vehicles, but Sanrel have given us the payment breakdown already, so we will use their own figures instead of every compliant vehicle paying the highest cap. Now let's look at their costs. Vusi Mona has stated on countless occasions that only 17 cents of every Rand that they receive goes to paying ETC, which is a company 65% owned by an international company called Capsh, who have direct links to the arms deal. They pay bribes in the arms deal. Caps have already stated that they'll be earning about 1 billion rand from this deal. The other 35% is owned by TMT Services, a local company who manage most of South Africa's speed trap operations. Now the other 83 cents of every rand goes towards enforcement costs and repaying the extensive debt that they've taken out in our names as taxpayers. For some other reason, they didn't include the enforcement costs in their 17 cents of every rand, and I think that's because Sanro will be enforcing it themselves and not ETC. As you can see, I've given them a, t a figure of 10% of their entire cost there that goes towards inform enforcement. That's an incredibly generous number, and that leaves us with 73% debt repayment. But now let's have a look at that debt. Using their latest financial statements for 2013, I've split their debt according to amount owed and when it is due, which is also known as the maturity date. I've used these figures to calculate a weighted average maturity date of their final debt. 
This comes out to the year 2021 for 36 billion rand to be paid. Based on the date of commencement, this leaves Sanrol with a weighted average of seven years to repay its debt. In other words, within seven years, Sanrol have to they have to have made enough money from road users to repay around 36 billion rand. Now, in my figures, I haven't included any profit for maintenance. These calculations don't make allowance for maintenance of these roads whatsoever. It only makes allowance for repaying their debt. We now have all of the information that we need to calculate whether their numbers make any sense at all. So let's have a look here. If we take inflation into account at 6% per annum, using their payment split that they provided us, we can calculate the percentage increases required each year just in order for them to repay their debt. It's important to remember that around 17 billion rand of this debt is held by the Government Employees Pension Fund, who funded the vast majority of this deal using Government Employees Pension Money. As I've calculated, we require an increase in prices of 29% per annum. Let me do that for you quickly over here. If we have just their CPI increase of 6%, we'll end up with a shortfall of 21 billion rand by 2021. So let's have a look at that quickly. What do they actually require here? In order to hit 30... Excuse me, that's wrong. It's 36 billion rand. Let's have a look at that again. And there we see the annual increase required. 28,9% at least. And that's every single year for seven years just for Sanrel to repay their debt. And as you can see, if we only increase it by CPI each year, as they claim they're going to do, they'll have a shortfall of an excess of 21 billion rand. Now, the problem is that the government has guaranteed most of this debt, so they cannot afford for Sanrel to default on this debt. So the government will need to bail Sanrel out to the tune of 21 billion rand, or they will have to increase their prices by 29% every year. And remember that this doesn't take into account any allowances for any maintenance of the roads whatsoever. This is simply for them to remain in business and to avoid defaulting on their debt. Now, this is why I believe that Sanrol and government are lying to us through their teeth. These figures that they're throwing around are lies. Or they're planning on increasing toll prices by a substantial percentage every single year. And I don't think that this only is affecting Gauteng motorists. The inflationary impact on the country is relatively substantial. They're adding around 250 million rand per month in additional costs to the logistics industry. Now, that's money that you and I still need to pay. So first we pay for retolls, then we pay more for our products, then we're subjected to 29% annual increases of retolls, and then we're subjected to further increases in the cost of living across the country. Now, it's also important to note that phase one of the freeway improvement project was only 185 kilometers at a cost of 30 billion rand. If we accept retolls and begin to pay, phase two kicks in in Gauteng. And this is for a further 220 kilometers at a projected cost of 35,7 billion rand. E-tolling is also planned for every major city in South Africa if we begin to pay and allow the system to work. We cannot allow this to happen. We have to force government's hand on this occasion and we have to utilize the fuel levy to repay this horrible debt that government has taken out in our names as citizens. Not since 1994 has a country stood united against a com common enemy, and we need to find the conviction to continue to take a stand and to continue this fight. Now, I've created an information pack with far more details that Sanrol don't want you to know. The link to this pack is in the description of this video. Please download it and read through the few pages to see how terrible e-tolling is and why civil disobedience is the only possible resolution to this problem. It's the final resolution that we have. So thank you for watching. Please share this video with as many people as you possibly can. And let's stop this travesty, this travesty of justice in its tracks once and for all.